Hello everyone. Um, we will be going over our lecture number 18. And this is a sort of a tutorial um, as most of the students asked about um, how to find four fundamental spaces uh, for a given matrix. So the whole idea is that we will be going for finding finding um, Basis for um, for fundamental subspaces subspaces um, linked to a matrix. A matrix A, which is given by um, 1, 3, 2, um, 2, 6, 4, um, 0, 1, 1, and then 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Um, here is my matrix, and we are going to over this tutorial where we will be finding four fundamental subspaces. Um, for this matrix, we have to understand um, uh, some characteristics of this matrix. This matrix has four rows. So, so here is the first row. Okay, let me call it R1. Here is the second row. Okay, um, R2. Um, and here is the third row, um, is R3, and here is the fourth one. So there are four rows. Um, I can highlight them, um, highlighter, and I can, I can just pick this, and I can do this. My first row, this one is my second row, this one is my third row, this is my fourth row. So I have four rows. So if I, if I just write down here and we call this order of the matrix. So the order is we have four rows. Cross how many columns we have because the matrix is fundamentally made from rows and columns. So if, if I go for um, columns then I have to into the column. So here is this one is my first column. Let's call it C1. Here is my second column. This is my C2. And here is my third column, which is C3. Um, so my first column is something that I engulf in this elongated ellipse that I can think of. Um, and here is my second column that goes all the way down and then go up. This is my second column. This one is my third column and goes also all the way down, engulf all the four elements and come up. So I have actually um, four rows. So I will say four rows, okay? And then I have three columns. So four rows and three columns. So the order is, so what, what actually this matrix is doing, um, this matrix is um, transforming. So let's, let's define what this matrix is doing. Based on the order, it basically takes a vector. It takes a vector in, okay. It takes a vector in R3. Okay, and transforms it, okay, and transforms it into R to the power of four. So it, it is basically taking a vector. So you, uh, in, in R3 and, and as an output, it spits out this vector in R4. Both are vectors, but one is has three components, so it belongs to, uh, 
uh, the three dimensional space the other one has four components so it belongs to a fourth dimensional space we can think of it um, to be to be on to be on the safe side uh, all those people who are more familiar with the with the concept of functions the functions we have a box a black box we can think of it and then there is an input and there is an output okay similarly a, a matrix also can act as a, a as a function in which it takes an input so now it is taking an input let's say this is x and this x is basically a member of r cube and it spits out this y another vector but this vector is a member of r to the power 4 so x contains um, three components so i can think of x as um, x1 x2 x3 so it's a vector and I get y, which is a four dimensional vector. So this is actually y1, y2, y3, and y4. So it's basically is a three dimensional vector transformation um, into, into a four dimensional vector. Okay, now how this transformation, transformation takes place and whether this transformation is useful or not. We, we can think of this matrix as a transformational function which takes a vector in R cube and the output after we multiply this matrix with a vector, we get to the output which is a four dimensional, four dimensional, um, this is uh, Y, so the four dimensional vector, okay? Um, so this is how it happens. So let me clean a little bit of this space because I may be needing, so I don't worry about this. And now, when now we talk about the spaces. Now there are four subspaces that are linked with this matrix, okay? Um, now, since we know that it, it takes R3, and transform it into R4. So this, the, there are spaces. So we have actually a space which, which we call a row space. There is a row space associated, associated with this A, okay? And right there, it is, it is mixed with, um, we can think of it, with another space, which is called null space of A. So this is, null space of it but, but keep in mind that they are only joined right in the middle by uh, a zero vector so we call this origin r zero this is a zero vector that vector belongs to both so so this vector is um kind of think about it zero 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 it has three components um now, now keep in mind um just for the sake of um, discussion that this, this whole space that I'm talking about right now, this is actually an R to the power three space. Inside this space, there are two subspaces. This is, this row space is a subspace and null space is also a subspace. But keep in mind, these two are not connected except at zero. And now what happened is this, this whole, okay, this whole thing transforms after multiplication with the matrix A, and we get two other subspaces. One is called column space. So this is C of A. This space is created, this is called column space. And this column space has this uh, middle joining point, okay, I can think of it. And now this joining point is linked with another space, which we call left null space. So this is null space of A transpose. Okay, now you can see very clearly the difference between this null space, which is on this side, which is null space of A. This is a null space of A transpose. Uh, now these two spaces belongs to R4. So you can, 
we can we can right now put them together and this whole space is r to the power of four and and here is our matrix sitting right in the middle okay and this matrix is a so the matrix a basically takes this r cube space which actually consists of these two spaces O space and null space and and bring us to this column space and left null space um, here also we have this zero okay so zero is the common vector between column space and left null space okay zero vector but but this zero vector is of uh, four components zero 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 because this zero belongs to r4 this zero that we just looked at here this zero this zero belongs to r cube that's why it has three components um but fundamentally what happened is when you take the transformation the row space is transformed into column space okay whereas this this null space that i'm talking about right now so here is this null space this all null space once multiplied with the matrix a it dissolves and it, it is mapped to the zero here so all of this is mapped to zero so all of this space that i'm talking about this whole space will lose its identity during the transformation and will go and map it onto one point the whole space just like a black hole the whole space will lose the identity and fall into this black hole which is zero vector similarly when you take the inverse path and and, and you go for let's say um, a inverse in a inverse you will take the column space and when you multiply with a inverse you will get the row space however the the left null space when multiplied with a inverse it will be completely dissolved and lose its identity and fall on to zero so in other words you will, you will never be able to make this this null space or if i'm going from this side to the other side uh, forward side then i can not make the null space because these spaces lose their identity so once they lose their identity i cannot recover them again so the if if there is a null space then then that basically means that um, there is no a inverse so there is a concept of no a inverse if there is a non zero um, non zero vector in null space of a so if if there is a non zero vector in null space of a zero vector is there of course but if there is any other one in addition to zero vector there in the null space then that matrix is not convertible we can think of it as a singular matrix um and and we cannot solve it to get a unique solution so all those implications are associated if if there is a null space so our attempt will be not to have a null space so having null space is not a good thing um, we should avoid having null space but anyway in this case we have a null space um, one thing i can think of it why it null space is there because if, if you look into very closely here and um, let me um, uh, identify this 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 fact why null space is there is if you look at this row this r2 row you will find out that this row can be easily made from from the upper row r1 if i just multiply uh, this row with two so it's this whole row is equal to two times r1 so row two is equal to two times r1 so it means that row two is completely dependent uh, because it's a scalar multiple of row one that's why row two is is not independent from row one so if row two is not independent from row one um then it means that we will have some null space because our rows are not all independent. Okay, so this is this is like one kind of sign that you can see why we have a null space here. But anyway, uh, we have to now find all those spaces, and we will find out uh, why we have this null space. So I will just go over uh, the methodology, how systematically we find. But before this, the intuition is as i described with some effects okay so i will just clean this whole thing up and go uh, in order to go for um, computing uh, these fundamental spaces 
we have to first resort to something which we call um, pro reduced echelon form. So we have to do what we call them R R E F. We, we, we have to convert our matrix into RREF. So in order to do this, um, if, if you see very clearly here is that um, I have to remove uh, the two here. So, so uh, let, let me write down the whole matrix again, then probably we are in better shape. One, three, two, two, six, four, zero, one, one. Um, zero, zero, zero. Okay, good to have zeros on the bottom because that's exactly what I did. Now, now where is my pivot? Um, so if I identify my pivot, pivot is the leading non-zero entry in every row. So in my first row, this is the leading non-zero entry. Now, what I want is that the rows which are uh, following this row, okay, this is row two, row three, row four, this, the, the underneath the pivot, everything should be zero. So, but here I see there is a two, although there are zeros, so it's a good sign, but I have to remove this two now. So in order to remove this two, what we will do is we will take um, the first row, multiply it with two minus two, R1, and we will add it to row two. Whatever the answer comes, we will take it and replace our R2. So if, if we do this whole operation, what you will find out is that you got the first row is undisturbed because we are not doing the processing on the first row. Um, but the second row will become zero, uh, one. So my, my second row becomes zero, zero, and zero. All of them are zeros. And the third row is undisturbed. And the final row is zero, zero, zero. Now, what I see here is that I got now, um, zeros on, on, on the second row. However, I want the zeros to be on the bottom because the third row is not all zeros. So the third row has higher preference. It should be elevated to the position of row two and row two should go to row three because all the zeros should be piled up. All the zero rows, who all elements are zero, we call them zero rows, they have to be piled up at the end, okay? In order to pile them at the end, what I'm going to do is, um, I'm going to do the row exchange. So let me bring my black whiteboard rather down. So now I'm, what I'm going to do is, I will replace and exchange. I will do the row exchange, R2 with R3. So if I do this row exchange, what you will find out is that one, three, two is there. Then this zero, one, one goes on the top. This zero, zero, zero comes on the bottom and the fourth row is already zero. So now we did the row exchange and we are pretty much okay. Now, if, if I just check my pivots, this is my pivot in the first row. And then in the second row, because for pivots we have to go row by row. So now this is my pivot, the leading non-zero entry. Now here, I have no pivot in this row. I have no pivot in the fourth row. So now I find those pivots. If I'm doing Gaussian elimination, I will stop here, but since I'm doing row reduced echelon form, so I have to basically make sure that anybody, any position on top of the pivot should also become zero. So in order to do this zero, we have to do um, minus three R2 and add it to our row one. So if I do this operation, what I will get at the end, one, then I will get zero, then minus three plus two is, is minus one, okay? And then I get zero, one, this is undisturbed, uh, zero, 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 zero. So, so here now I will stop because I have all the conditions that are associated with RREF. Now here you see we have a pivot um, available here in this row because for pivot we have to go row by row. The pivots are being found by moving row by row. In second row I have this pivot. 
and I don't have any pivot here, I don't have any pivot here, and everybody above pivot is zero, below is zero. So that, that is rho reduced echelon form of A. So right now in front of me, this is the one I'm, I'm looking for. So what I will do right now is, I, uh, now I will, I will take this matrix and, and I will put it right next to my original matrix. So um, if, if I just go back up and, Okay, so if I just go up. Now, I will just do a cleanup operation after those row operation that I have done. Um, so let me um, remove this one altogether. This is also clean up my space a little bit. Um, okay, so I am I have cleaned a little bit of space. And now I'm going to write down, so here is my matrix, one, three, two, two, six, four, zero, one, one, zero, zero, zero. So here is my original matrix and I have converted it using row operation. That's why I'm not writing equal sign, I'm writing this equivalent sign, row equivalent. And what I got here is another matrix which is one, zero, minus one, uh, zero, one, one, then zeros all the way, and zeros all the way. Now, on my left, I have this, my matrix A. So, so here is my matrix A, and here is my R, R, E, F of A. Now, I, I will be using, I will make, uh, use of this particular matrix, which is row reduced echelon form, okay? And I will try to find my um, subspace, okay? So I can move a little bit down and then we can check. Okay, so here is, I will use my grays. and get rid of this stuff that I have. I have already done with it. I have the processing right in front of me and now, okay. So now I'm going to go for the column space. So let's say how to find the column space of A. For column space of A, we will, we will go back to our row reduced echelon form and, and we'll see where the pivots are. Now, if you if you look very carefully, we already identified the pivots. This is our pivot, the one I'm circling right now, and this is our pivot. So I will look at the columns. This is my first column, okay? And I will, I will see that in this column, so this is my first column, and I'm going to check whether this column contains the pivot. Yes, if it contains the pivot, I will go back to my original column corresponding to that column. So I will pick um, this one, one, two, zero, zero. So it is one, two, zero, zero. So here is my first, column that is independent and it goes into the basis for my column space. Then I will see the next pivot. The next pivot is in column number two. So here is my column number two and it contains the pivot. And, and the one, I will go back to the original matrix and here is the entry and I will pick the entry and the entry is this. Uh, green one for it. So here is this entry. This is the entry. So it is right now uh, three, six, one, zero. So here is, so these two guys, if I put them in a set, this become a basis set for my column space. So my column space has dimension two. So this is the dimension is equal to two. Okay, so it has two vectors and these two vectors belong to R4. So my column space actually is a subspace in R4, okay? And now I will go for finding the row space, okay? And, and, and row space is, is also very easy if you know the RREF form of this. So, um, so let me pick um, the row space. So here is the row space. R of A. Now the row space of A actually consists of 
those rows which contains the pivots so for rows i will i will just go let me erase this one for convenience so i will erase this guy this guy okay and now i'm going to look at it but this time i'm going to look at the the rows which contains the pivot so the first row does it contain pivot yes but for this one i don't need to go to original so i can just pick the same one so it is one zero minus one okay because the row operation does not disturb the row space whereas the row operation disturbs the current space so we have to go and pick the corresponding columns in the original matrix um now let me let me look at the, the second row yes second row also contains the pivot which is in the red circle so i will pick 0 1 1 now third one there is no pivot in this row there is no pivot in the fourth row so i will just stop here and put these rows which has pivots in the basis for the row space so now if i look at the dimension of the row space the dimension is two so in other words if if you compare uh, and, and this uh, r a actually belongs to in r to the power three now the column space belongs to r to the power four and here is the here is the correspondence you can see very clearly that the dimension of the column space and the dimension of the row space they are equal look at this look at this they are always equal so it means if i declare that a matrix contains two independent columns then i have to say that it is also true that it has two independent rows so it cannot be that it has two independent column and three independent rows no they have to be equal so, so that's where the dimension comes okay and now let me clean it because now i'm going for uh, but i can i can go down yes if you wish because i want to show you the whole spaces so now i'm, I'm going to go for the null space of the matrix and as you know that the null space of a matrix actually resides in r cube so but what is null space null space of a matrix means that if i take a matrix multiply it with with x then i should be able to get okay zero here not b zero here so these are all those uh these x are all those people once they are multiplied with this matrix so there's a matrix vector product this product will end up into zero so they lose identity they don't actually go into the new space they go into the black hole of the new space which is the origin the zero vector it drops right there so uh, in order to find this in other words i can very easily do an augmented matrix strategy so i, I will put a matrix um, a and in this case the matrix a is the one which is the row reduced echelon form okay so which is one zero minus one uh, zero one one zero 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 because instead of a i can use r r e f because for solution r r e f is more convenient than the original matrix so I, i'm just using it because we already find it so zero 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 and for x um i will have because x will belong to r cube so it will be x one x two three here you go and and then there's an equal sign um so instead of equal sign, um, what, what I can do is I can make an augmented matrix here. So it's like, and, and here is this, this zero thing, and this is zero, 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 zero. Okay. Um, so now, now if I, if I look at these equations, because each line, so, so let me say, um, like I will do the highlighter. So here, if I do this, this one, first row and multiply it with first column i'm going to get the first entry okay so here is my first entry sorry okay so now my first entry is um, x1 uh, minus x3 equal to zero 
which basically implies that x1 is same as x3 okay for the second one i have x2 now i'm talking about this one so here is if i if i highlight it i'm talking about now this one the second one again i'm going to multiply with this one and i'm going to get this zero this zero okay and so in this situation it becomes x2 plus x3 equal to zero that implies that um x2 is equal to minus x3 now the other rows are zero so which basically gives you zero equal to zero that shows you that um, x3 is equal to x3 okay now if i make a matrix out of it because i have to do x1 x2 x3 so this is x1 x2 x3 this unknown matrix is now equal to if i take just this is x3 minus x3 and then x3 so i will get here um if i just take x3 as a scalar so i will take x3 common this will become one minus one one so now my my basis is, is very clear so my my null space of a actually the basis of this is only one vector which is one minus one one so it is actually a, a one dimension subspace which is which is vertically a line this is a, a line in r3 now if you add this one dimension with, with the with the row space of two dimensions so this is because row space and null space lives under r cube so if you 2 plus 1 equal to 3 so this is a check like if you add this dimension of the row space with the dimension of the null space then you should get the dimension of the whole space which is r cube which is three um, now we will find the left null space okay so in order to find the left null space i will uh, now just clean a little bit of this and Now, now we are going for finding the basis for left null space. Okay, left null space. Now, what, what is the left null space? For left null space, the, the most important thing is you have to have uh, a transpose. So this is A transpose. So transpose A. So this will become, if, if you do this transformation, if you do the transpose, um, what you will get is um, this will be one, two, zero, zero, um, three, six, one, zero. So the rows become columns, columns become rows. So this is called transpose two, four, one, zero. Now, uh, what actually I want from national space is that a transpose. Then there are certain x which once multiplied with them then they have to end up equal to zero okay so a transpose x equal to zero now in order to really solve it um, now this becomes for me a homogeneous linear system equation instead of b i have zero now i will go for r or es so let me find RREF, so I will not go through the exercise, but I will just give you because it, it has the same steps as I did before. Um, you have to do um, minus three times R1 plus R2, then you have to do minus two times R1 plus R3. So if, if you do those two operations, then you have to do this R2 exchange with R3, okay? And ultimately you will do this 2R2 plus R3, and that will replace R3. So if you do all those four operations, you will end up with the matrix that I'm showing you right now. This will become um, 
one, two, zero, zero, then zero, zero, one, zero, then zero, 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 zero. So after all those operations, we, we can very easily see um, where the pivots are. So this is A transpose and this is R, R, E, F, row reduced echelon form of A transpose. Um, now this is my pivot. Uh, and where is the pivot in the second row? Because for pivot, you have to go to row by row. But this is the pivot. Now I don't have any pivot here, okay? So, so looking from this perspective, um, I, I, I can say very clearly certain things. So, so let me first erase to make a space for my equation. So, so here is, I'm going to make a space for my equations. Okay. Um, now this RREF A transpose has to be multiplied with a vector in R4, four dimensional space. So X1, X2, X3, X4. And, and this whole thing um, has to be equal to, um, has to be equal to um, what I say zeros, okay? And this should be how many zeros? There will be three zeros because you are transforming from R4 to R cubes because this is A transpose, you're going back. Um, now, now, if you look into the equation, the first equation is um, X1 plus two X2 equal to zero. Um, and then uh, you have another equation which is x2 equal to zero. Then from the third one, you have x3 equal to x3 because it's zero. And you also have x4 equal to x4 from the fourth one because you don't have any condition on R, x3 and x4. So x3 and x4 are kind of both free variables. Um, yeah, let me say it. Um, x3 and x4 are what we call them free variables. Free variable means they can take any value which suits them. Okay. However, there are conditions on. So if, if you if you put plug x2 equal to zero in this one, x1 also becomes zero. So what we have is we have a one vector which is zero. This is x1, this is x2. And now for x3, we will put one and for x4, we'll put zero. This is our one particular vector. The other vector that we find for the basis is, now x1 is zero from equation we can see very clearly because you plug x2. Then x2 is also zero and x3 is our free variable, we'll put it zero and our fourth variable put one. So you can see that we are, we are exchanging. Um, let, let me highlight this fact. So you see that here, this is x3. We put x3 one and we put zero for x4. Here, we did the alternate. X3 is zero and now X4 is one. So it means you have three variables and you will alternately give them one and rest are zero. That's how you make this whole subspace. So this is our subspace for left null space. This is the basis for left null space, okay? And, and what is the dimension of this? The dimension is two. Now this makes sense because this two will be added to this two, okay? So you have um, dimension of column space plus um, a dimension of left null space. This should be equal to um, the dimension of the space from which they are coming. So this is four. That's why it has two. This dimension is also two. So yes, we checked our answer. Our answer is correct. Yes. We have two people in our basis, and these are two people in our dimension. So th this basically shows that we have computed all our subspaces, and these all subspaces are basically um, making sense, okay? Um, I will stop here, and I will uh, say thank you very much for listening to my lecture. If you have any comments on this lecture, please, you can put it down on the YouTube and I will try to answer you there. Or if you want, you can leave your remarks on my
Google Plus. Uh, thank you very much. And uh, let me know your thoughts on this and we'll see you next time. Okay.